It was the 2018 NBA Finals. The Golden State Warriors, fresh off their second championship run in three years and led by the kid from Akron, were looking to make a statement and only one team stood in their way. The Cleveland Cavaliers, led by none other than that other kid from Akron, LeBron James. Having been gentlemanly swept by the Warriors in the previous finals, LeBron James was on a mission. One that, if successful, should solidify his name in the league as the best to ever do it. This was to write the start of the closing chapters in what was supposed to be the legacy of the kid from Akron, who wasn't supposed to be on this stage, but yet, somehow, despite all the obstacles he faced, here he is, on the grand stage, about to face off with, yet again, his crosstown rival. If you aren't on his team, you are only in his way, and the Warriors are about to feel the wrath of LeBron James as he goes into rare form and unleashes what has been building up for the last 24 years. Everything had gone to plan. That is, until this man showed up on the same stage. As Curry goes in for the kill, to smash LeBron's dreams and bury them deep underneath a mountain of irreconcilable defeat, LeBron- Hey, what's happening everyone? This is Swish. If you're new to the channel and like the content, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button as it helps the channel a ton. Thanks and welcome to Swish Culture. Stephen Curry and LeBron James weren't always rivals. As a matter of fact, back in the day, I mean way back in the day, when Curry was still playing college hoops, LeBron James was a big fan of Steph Curry. I'm talking about going to see Steph Curry play at a no-name school, get up out of your seat big. While nowadays it doesn't seem that way, LeBron himself wanted to witness in person the greatness that is Stephen Curry. This goes to show you that if LeBron wasn't LeBron, aka the king, aka the biggest thorn in Michael Jordan's legacy, aka arguably the greatest basketball player of all time, he would likely be one of Steph Curry's, if not the biggest, Steph Curry fan. And he probably is, but we're not going to talk about that. We are going to talk about the fact that Stephen Curry, legitimately LeBron James' biggest rival, is about to usurp basketball's biggest star for the third time, and LeBron was not having it. Prior to the 2018 NBA Finals, LeBron James, while he dominated the East, still struggled going up against the Golden State Warriors. He had lost in 2015. Curry, and the dream season is now complete. The Golden State Warriors are the 2015 NBA champions. Barely managed to escape with the 2016 title after the Warriors choked away a 3 1 lead. and his team was completely dismantled in the 2017 championships after the Warriors had acquired Kevin Durant. Despite these struggles, however, night in and night out, LeBron struggled with another battle. The name of the opponent? Skip Bayless. As LeBron grappled with the pedestal upon which he was thrust with many anointing him as the greatest basketball player to have ever played the game, this battle with Skip Bayless was a stark reminder that there are many out there that didn't believe he was deserving of the title. With Stephen Curry handing out L's to every superstar in the entire league, including LeBron himself in their finals matchups, LeBron could not let this continue if he wanted to save his legacy. Not to mention that Kevin Durant himself was pitted against LeBron as the best player on the planet repeatedly. LeBron had something to prove. That he was still better than Steph, still better than KD, and that once and for all, Skip Bayless was wrong. The Cavaliers finished the 2018 regular season with 50 wins that year, finishing as the fourth seed in a loaded Eastern Conference that saw the Raptors with 59 wins and the 76ers winning their last 16 games of the season. While LeBron was still expected to come out of the East as he had the last three years prior, it was no easy task. It took the Cavaliers seven games to put away the fifth-seeded Indiana Pacers. They then swept the Raptors and took another seven games to put away the Boston Celtics, who were down a budding superstar in Gordon Hayward, who had fallen to injury earlier that year. Bruised and battered, the Cavaliers won the Eastern Conference, and it was time to take on the Golden State Warriors, the heavy title favorite. Being the fourth year in a row that the Cavs and the Warriors were to battle for the championship, 
It wasn't a surprise that the two were facing off again as it was the expected outcome from the beginning of the season. This is despite the fact that meeting for the fourth time was a record setting endeavor. It was like the unfolding of a seasonal drama as familiar faces would meet in familiar places. Everyone knew the cast of characters, however the ending was still unknown. On one half of the court were the Warriors vying for their third title in four years with two of the most heralded players in Stephen Curry and Kevin Durant. The Cavs on the other half with James himself and Kevin Love. The stakes in this game were high. If the Cavs win, LeBron significantly strengthens his case as the greatest basketball player of all time, if not outright declaring it. If the Warriors win, well, that's two in a row and would likely incentivize KD to stick around and shoot for the coveted 3 P. LeBron having put up some monster stats earlier in the playoffs, he was literally having his best playoff performance ever. So expect LeBron was playing with a chip on his mind. Yeah, and also one on his shoulder. At this point, it's fair to mention that there were a number of times that LeBron and Steph actually got into it. Like for example, in 2016, when Steph Curry was trying to get open with less than a minute left to go in the fourth quarter and with LeBron guarding him, had gotten real handsy, grabbing him with both hands, almost throwing him to the ground as Steph Curry was trying to run her out. They got into each other's faces about the play and LeBron was not backing down. That Steph Curry didn't take a more dominant role in confronting LeBron is probably one of the reasons Steph isn't considered as high on the list of dominant players, or overall great players of all time. This isn't something that should matter, but it clearly does. Needless to say, tonight was extra spicy with a side order of an impending 4-0 smackdown. Forget all that friendly talk back in 2016, and forget how LeBron idolized Steph back when Steph was carrying Davidson. This was man-to-man -man combat. Flames were lit, and only one can see his team through the finals. Due to some uh, theatrics by J.R. Smith, the teams were tied at the end of regulation, and tensions were high. LeBron had literally willed his Cavs team, and yet the pressure was too great. He just couldn't handle it anymore. There was Steph. There was KD. Did you believe what he, he was doing? Carry the no team. one else was helping. It was just LeBron. Steph is better. It was JR's fault. KD is better. JR was What's high. LeBron gonna do? LeBron now? isn't the GOAT. As LeBron blocked Steph on a layup attempt near the end of overtime, sealing the first win of the series, LeBron was infuriated that Steph would further pummel the Cavs into the ground. It was difficult to tell from that angle but it seems there might have been quite a bit of unnecessary contact. As the play concluded and words were exchanged, LeBron rammed an elbow into Steph as the two got heated in the final moments of the exchange, end of the game. Clay began to circle the two, attempting to get some separation between LeBron and a now agitated Steph. He somewhat lured LeBron away with some words of his own to separate the two without using any physical force. Now, interesting takeaway. Had Steph Curry been 6'9 and built like LeBron, would LeBron have gotten as physical as he did with Steph? I think not. LeBron is one of the biggest wusses on the NBA court and would not pick on someone his size. Silly how we live in an age where the bigger brain, used more metaphorically here, is clearly the dominant trait, yet we idolize physicality in a game that is proven to be much less physical than mental. Don't believe me? ask any player. That said, both guys have a lot of respect for each other on the court, and though I enjoy the rivalry with Steph and LeBron, I can't deny my curiosity to see the two play together. One last thing, Bob Myers, make sure you have a good draft pick in 2024. Unless an NBA rule change occurs regarding eligibility, then make sure you have one in 2023 as well. For good or for bad, drafting Bronny James when he becomes available would be one of the best moves the Golden State Warriors could make. And that's it for today's video. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Until next time, swish. I block so hard, sweetie, get served. Call me Lonzo Ball, bitches get swerved. Usually, I don't get down with these girls, but tonight it's on my mind. So I might eat these words. I just wanna